Hi, we're in the garage and we are talking about tube swapping. So this is a um, for K7000 25 inch monitors and the message board guys and the one guy in particular had pointed out that he had found a sharp 25 inch TV which he found to be a direct swap into these uh, 25 inch monitors and so this was a great opportunity for me to uh, fix um, one of the two monitors. So this is a very burned in 25 inch tube it came out of a six player X-Men, so there's a pair of them. And so I already did the tube swap on the other one, obviously, it's it's probably, it's right here. And so this is the other one, it's companion tube there, because it's a dual monitor cap. Now, because X-Men has these, um, these frames, framing each character, um, it burned in over time so you can see all these rectangles and even the different sizes of the rectangles burn into the monitor. So this is uh, obviously, it still has a good picture, but no one wants to see these rectangles on their screen or or have um, um, a tube that just doesn't have strong colors. So obviously it's a good candidate for tube swapping. And so tube swapping will take the tube out of a TV and actually replace it into the, the chassis, I mean the, the frame, and then reuse the chassis. So there's a couple things we're going to go over, but it's a really simple procedure. It takes about an hour, and I try to transplant a couple of things with it. Now this one's already done. So this is, I've already done this one. This is, these are K7000. So the models that we've been using are these sharp 25 inch and I'll rotate this in a minute. Now this is a uh, model number 25HS100 and there's going to be a couple of models that are listed. This one is made in August 1996 and so we've seen these sharp TVs. Sharp TVs from 1993 all the way to 2001. You can look at the the general profile of the TV and then I think there's like these little stereo cutout holes in the bottom and I'm going to take it apart. So the tools that we need for this are, you know, we need some simple wiring tools but in terms of mechanical tools or just stripping it apart, you need 7 16 for the, the frame of the K7000 that, that's, that's right up here and so there's just four bolts. And then for once you get the crack the chassis, the case open on the TV. I think it's a 11 millimeter and I'll go over that again. So this is just a simple driver and screwdriver. So I'm going, you also need a nice blanket. So I have a, a moving blanket here. I'm going to lay the TV and the monitor face down and then we're going to get cracking on it. So let's get started. So um, this is the TV and the monitor placed face down onto uh, the moving uh, blanket and I've taken off the back of the case. There's five Phillips screws that take off uh, the back of the TV. There's four screws, one in each corner, one in the middle near um, the, the coax section so it holds the, the, the board in place. I've taken off the, um, the yoke board because all that isn't really needed and then the, the flyback, the anode cap is, I first I, of course I discharged it because I had been testing this TV so it held the charge. I mean, if you haven't even fired it up in months then you shouldn't have to worry about it but I had to discharge it because I just had um, turned on this TV earlier so it did hold the charge. And now I've, um, I've taken my multimeter and I've shoved the red and the black, the two leads into, first you test the, the red and the blue and then you test the green and the yellow. So you're just testing the um, the resistance between them and this for these monitors that I'm getting off of the sharp I've been getting about 1.3 off of one reading and then I've gotten eight and change off of the other so if you're getting similar readings then you're basically right in the same pocket uh, this is my third monitor and I've seen I've seen similar readings for all three so I've come to conclude that all of these are probably going to be of similar range a tube looks a little different from what I've seen before this is an a 63 lav 61 X and that's different from the other Sharp that I got, which I think is the same even model number as the A63FW32X. This is another TV tube here. So, and these are different from what we're seeing on the K7000s. I've seen all sorts of tubes on them. And this is one, it says B63AAMO8X. So, it doesn't really matter. They're all CR23 um, connectors on the back. This is the type of uh, yoke size and I was right it was the 10 millimeter for the um, the driver I had to switch from the 11 it's 10 so um, there's 10 millimeters four bolts here that'll loosen up the tube now I've also gone and disconnected everything that was kind of tied together here there's the um, 
there's going to be like this ground strap that goes all around the, the TV, holds the four corners, and then there's going to be this degauss coil. I want to transplant the degauss from the monitor onto the TV. I've seen actually better degauss coils on monitors than from the TV, so this one looks pretty good. The other one looks really flimsy. The one from the other t other monitor was this is like white coated and rubber, so they come in various uh, designs and stuff. But the only thing you're really worried about is that um, the yoke reading. So I know this tube is going to work. I'm fairly confident. I'm not going to make the other reading. And one thing you will see is that the connectors don't match. So this connector does not match with what's coming out of these arcade monitors. So what I do is I, I cut the end off of this bad tube and then I, I patch it in and I use heat shrink and I, I solder that all down. I will be using the ground strap from my arcade monitor as well as the degauss. So once I get all these stripped down to just the tube, take the frame, take them out of the frames, then I'm going to go over and transplant all that stuff. So let's fast forward. Okay, we've jumped forward a little bit because obviously I don't think you want to sit here and watch me turn screws and bolts. But um, we're in a similar place here. So here's our arcade monitor tube and then our TV um, tube. Now what I did was I removed these four large mounting screws that were holding it into the plastic frame. And I think it gets its rigidity from this strap that kind of goes around the tube. And so that's what really holds this frame together. Obviously it's very flexible and it's kind of flimsy. But um, so what I did was I removed all four of them. I made sure there's no wires or anything hanging on to the old TV chassis and then that I would be able to lift the tube up. And so once I got it unscrewed, I grabbed diagonal corners of the tube because the, the frame is, is flexible so you can slip your hand in there because this is the tubes inside the frame where on the arcade one, the, the frame is on the tube, so um, on the back of the tube. So I <clears throat> I lifted opposite corners, and then I lifted the whole tube out of the plastic um, frame, and then I just kind of kicked the frame aside, and then I, I put the tube back down on its face on this moving blanket so that you know I could work on it here. Now I'm going to basically unclip the degauss um, coil. Um, coil from from how it's mounted on the on this TV monitor, and they're going to remove the the, um, the strap, the ground strap that goes around the tube too. So this piece, this degauss, and this strap, I'm going to basically remove it, remove this one, kind of set it aside, and then I'm going to take the arcade one and I'm put it on here. Because the thing I want is I want the original kind of um, other hardware, and this connector is different, so it'll save me from patching in this degauss. Um, coil connector and I don't know it just makes me feel better that more of the original stuff is on there and I really just want to change the tube rather than changing other ones and I've seen some of these degauss coils kind of seem thinner than the one that came on the arcade monitor so I want to just always use arcade parts as, um, as much as possible so just looking around see how they're just very similar. It's going to bolt right up and it's going to look really nice. And I find that these TV tubes are usually a lot less dusty. Um, you can see the the um, this um, coating. I forgot what it was called. Uh, I just look in the message boards. But don't wipe this coating off, okay? Because that's that's for the tube. Uh, uh, Aqua Dag or something like that. And I forgot the actual name of it, but something like that. And it's don't wipe it off. That that's supposed to be there. It does something for the tube. And you will notice little differences, like the um, the TV in the arcade. You have some of these these little um, hole throughs on the on the strap mounting strap that kind of goes around the TV, um, the tubes. So sometimes they're a little different like that. But um, yeah, I'm gonna jump forward again. Uh, the reason why I'm jumping forward is because I'm doing this by myself. I have one hand holding the camera in. I don't want to waste your time. So, okay, we made a little bit more progress. We have um, transplanted our degauss coil. So what um, I noticed on this one that's a little different is the coil is held by these just the, these vinyl loops, and they kind of wrap around the coil, and they just kind of hang on each corner. There's little slits on it here, and so just kind of there's one in each four corners. And this this coil is, has plenty of slack in it, so it doesn't need to be tied up like like the one on the other monitors that I've done, where they need a a long zip tie to kind of tie them down. Um, basically before that I actually put the ground strap 
down. And the ground strap has um, springs on there, like right here. And so it puts tension, and then there's just one on each. It loops down and into each uh, each ear here, the mounting mounting ear. Now, um, that's pretty simple. The degauss was pretty simple. And the only tricky thing that I um, kind of had to do was transplant this uh, this um, connector, the yoke connector, to the TV tube and from the RK monitor. So, you know, red, red, blue, blue, but you're gonna notice something a little different here. Um, the brown that comes off the arcade monitor goes to yellow on the TV tube and green and yellow. So you naturally think, oh, yellow, yellow, but on here, those two are reversed. And um, the original guy that did the 25 inch monitor, he pointed that out, so thanks to him on that. <clears throat> so it saves me having to swap that later on. So basically this is all together and that's all the hard part. The rest is putting the frame on and then hooking up the chassis. Oh, and we're gonna go over the chassis also. So I'll talk about that next. So I got it all framed up now. I basically just kind of put the laid the frame on top and then I tightened it up with, uh, I came from the bottom because the bolts come from the other side. And I put the four bolts that hold the frame onto the monitor. I was already done wiring it. Um, wiring and fixing the connectors and now I just had to frame it up and get it centered um, I tightened it down and then I flipped it up and it's all mounted up now the chassis you're gonna notice one thing different once you get this uh, plugged in it I'm assuming that your chassis already works so I would go in and you know cap it all and just do what needs to be done on the chassis but you're gonna notice something different once you fire it up you're gonna notice that the image does not fill up the screen and so one thing you will have to do is to adjust the width cap. Because the width cap right down in here, see what 30, 36 I think it is, C36 or 38, but it's this one right next to the width coil. And this is this big cap here. And all the stock ones that I've seen are 0.39, um, um, 0.39. And so what you will need is a 0.47 to drop in there. And this is um, 400 volts. And I picked up a bunch of these and then and I swapped this cap in there. So the width cap governs the general range and then you adjust the width coil to actually fine tune and get it dialed in perfectly. So I usually kind of, um, once it's out, I put, a, um, I turn down the width coil all the way down so it's in, more in the middle and then I and then I adjust up from there once I get the width coil in and um, have it all dialed in. So once you, since you have the chassis out, you should swap the width coil and then you should wire that up and put it in. So once you got it all um, hooked up, one thing that's really important to do is to adjust the coils, um, the colors on the yoke um, board and you'll notice. I like to use a CPS2 board and you know this could be dialed in. The green's a little low um, on this one, but you know, I like to dial in the brightness, the contrast, and all the colors and get it set up using using guides like this on and off of a CPS2 board and as you can tell the blacks are really black everything's looking really good on there and I'm really impressed with these results I think this is great and 10 20 dollar TV can get you a very beautiful picture so I want to thank the other guys that uh, did the research before me and kind of led the way and I've been doing a few this is my third one so um, I'm seeing some great results thanks as a final note what I like to do is basically case up the bad um, tube in the TV monitor case and then drop it off on recycling. And it's a win-win for everybody. You get rid of something that uh, you're obviously not too happy with and the recycling center gets a little bit of money for um, recycling the tube and everybody's happy.